Hey guys, this is the Blue Bridge, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about one manager and one player that the Chelsea fan base were crying for to join us at the start of the season, and how they didn't perform so well against a certain English club in the Champions League. <laughs> Uh, so, elite manager, they told me. Why are we going for um, an average manager when we can get an elite manager? And who was this elite manager that I was hearing about? Enrique. Luis Enrique was this elite manager that most of our fan base were crying for. They didn't want Pochettino. Um, they just wanted Enrique or Nangelsman. Them or nobody. And all these hipsters, all these people telling me, you know, we're going to be in the big trouble if we don't get one of these two and we're not ambitious enough to get the, one of these two coaches then you know what um not being reactionary or oh, i am a bit being a bit shameless as well okay it's one game but it's not one game actually I'm not, no actually it's not one game because um psg have had a difficult start an indifferent start to the um league uh so they're currently sitting in fifth position after um, winning three, drawing three, losing one. Okay, um, most people may look at that and say, that's not a bad start. But when you're looking at a side like, like, like PSG, who are so far ahead of all the other French competitors, with when you look at um, player for player, then it's not the greatest start that you expect from, from a new manager. They've had a lot of changes in their team as well. They've made, they've brought in about six or seven players. But Luis Enrique has got the best arguably the best footballer in world football, um, uh, 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 Kylian Mbappe. He's got one of the best wingers in world football in um, Dembele. Um, um, so, and Shinar, and they've, so they've, 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 they've got quite a few players, quite a few top players in that side at the moment. And there's one person, this Ugarte, that all the Chelsea fans were creaming for. But I'm coming for him in a minute. I'm coming for him in a minute. So um, you'd expect that this elite manager would um, be doing a lot better than you know, the top of the table. Um, at, at, and you'd think that they'll be doing you know, really good in the Champions League. But yesterday, the performance I saw, the tactics were shocking. Absolutely shocking against a, a new a boy at Newcastle side. Okay, fair play to Newcastle, who played well, pressed hard, flooded the midfield, five in the midfield. And how did um, this elite manager line up against this um, this Newcastle midfield? Two in midfield. Only had two in midfield. They got overrun in midfield. Did he do anything about it? Hmm. A lot of... Um, a lot of complaints about previous managers, Chelsea, oh, they wait too long to make substitutions and everything else. Did he? Not really. The, the person he took off was that star boy, Ugarte. That's the only um, major change. He didn't change the shape or anything else. He carried on playing the same way. They carried on getting overrun and they got thrashed, schooled actually, 4-1 by um um Newcastle. And the commentator summed it up nicely. It was like it was um just... There was, it was like a five-a-side game. You know? the, the forwards were doing their own thing, the four up front were doing their own thing, and the rest of the, the six who defensively were doing their own thing. There was no cohesiveness, no joined up play. No, as this, as, you know, the, the fan base likes to see patterns of play. I didn't really see. You know, in the last 10, ten minutes, they kind of got back into the game a little bit. Um, but apart from that, it was a very disjointed performance by them. And... Um, He's had a whole pre-season and everything else. And the way that, 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 that the setup is, doesn't look that elite to me. And to these people who are calling for him, really quiet today on social media. Hmm. I wonder why. So now I'm moving on to um, Manuel Ugarte. Um, and everyone, not everyone, a lot of the fan base were really annoyed with the board for not getting this one over the line. Um, we were close to getting him. I think, I'm not sure what happened, but then PSG came in, gazumped us. And let's just say the fan base weren't happy about it. And everyone was saying, we're going to regret this, 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 this um, decision. But and the, I, I said it when I think I did the original video with regards to Ugarte, that a lot of these people, I think a lot of people just jump on the bandwagon because 
some big accounts talk about, yeah, we want this Agate. And everyone like sheep just, just follow and say, yeah, yeah, he's the one we want. Half of these people who were crying for Agate never ever seen him play. Or if they had seen him play, they've probably seen him play on two or three occasions. And I hadn't seen a lot of Agate. I saw him, I think, when he, they played against Arsenal. Didn't really notice him to be free. He wasn't like a standout. Just like the PSG, the youngster, the 17-year-old yesterday, I noticed him. He was a standout performer. But when I saw Agate in the past, he wasn't someone I, was, I stood up and thought, hmm, I want him in our midfield, you know. Um, and the, the, the little clips that I saw, and it, you know, with YouTube is hard to gauge because you could always put out YouTube clips of, of, of players' performances. Seen him a couple of times play for PSG this year. He looks okay, you know. Not this elite player that some people are talking about. He does look okay. Yesterday, I'm going to give him a bit of slack. I'm not going to be too harsh for him because I before because as I mentioned before, the tactics from Enrique were shocking, and it was like two of them against four or five. So it was always going to be a difficult task for him. But in the you know the Premier League, Newcastle played it like a Premier League game, full of hustle and bustle and fast tempo football and he couldn't really handle that and so I think it was the third goal that they scored yeah the goal where Donnarumma made that mistake he was like he was walking running on treacle or walking on treacle where he was easily breezed past was it Longstaff who scored a goal yeah I think he was just breezed past and he just couldn't have that turn of pace to get back at the um the defender so I think he got a you no know, lay the blame at him they just walked through the mid i think two or three times they walked through that midfield and he wasn't that great shield that people are talking about in the middle and you know what um the thing is if conor gallagher was playing for sport in lisbon and um he was and ugarte was from our academy the narrative would be different you know if you look at the description of Ugarte um, before he came to Chelsea, and, and this is I'm taking this. Um, I, I looked it up a lot of descriptions for Ug um, Ugarte, and strengths and weaknesses. Um, Ugarte is a tenacious, is tenacious, and can play in a variety of positions in the centre of the park. Sounds like someone. Sounds a bit like Connor Gallagher. An astute tackler, Igarte has no qualms about getting hold of the ball in close quarters and being able to manoeuvre out of tight spaces. Um, when crowded, okay, maybe the edge over Connor there. With a tireless engine, Ugarte's main appeal though is his sheer brawn and strength. He's a mentality monster with great guile and physical attributes. So that's that is describing Connor Gallagher to a T. Somebody who's got a tireless engine. Someone who's 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 got. Um, not going to give the defenders or the, the, the opposition a moment's rest and like a, a bit of a battering ram. So that's what we're describing here. But because Igarte is South American, he's got a fancy name, he's not from Academy, he's viewed as different. And I don't understand that with the mentality of our fan base. So um, it just goes to show, you know, sometimes, as I said, it's one game. I'm not going to... Uh, you know, this was a bit of a cheeky video, to be really, to, to be honest. But I'm just acting like some of our fan base act reactionary. You know, if Connor had a bad game, we'll all be hearing about it. So I'm doing it for Ogarte. He's had a bad game, so I'm, t I'm saying it. Not to say that, you know, I'll judge him at the end of the season, like I did with everybody else. But it was quite funny um, just seeing how the, the people who are crying for the Ogarte, crying for um, Enrique, it was a bit silent yesterday. And that just goes to show that everything takes time, you know. Enrique's this project is going to take time. It's, it's not it's not a quick fix overnight, especially when they've made seven seven changes. Just like Pochettino, it's going to take time. It's not a quick fix. And if Enrique had the side that we had, I think it's going to it'll be a longer journey for for him. So, oh, this goes to show, to, 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 to show you know, it gives you know, teaches us a lesson about the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So, guys. What do you think about um, the performance if you watch the game? And do you think it's just a blip or do you think we dodged a bullet by not getting um, Enrique or Ugarte? Stick your comments in the section below. And don't forget, as always, guys, to like, subscribe, turn on post notifications to be notified every time I make a new video. So take care. Bye-bye.